Welcome to another Roadside Live event. I am so excited to have Paula here from Next Level Consultants. Hi, Paula. Hi there. <laughs> Hi. So thanks to Paula's 30, 30 plus years in dentistry, what did you start when you were like 10 years old? No, more like five. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks to that incredible experience, uh, you know, to, to Next Level Consultants, she just brings so much to the board for, for Next Level. Um, aside from owning several other businesses, she's also a practicing dental hygienist and an international educator and speaker for Invisalign and BioLase. Her background in and out of the dental office uh, practice gives her a unique skill set that brings incredible value to each of her patients and consulting clients. So it's so great to have you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm in sunny Arizona. Can't complain, you know. Oh, I'm a well, little jealous. Well, we can listens, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. I love that grit in the background. I love your sign in the background that says grit. I think that's what everybody needs right now is a little bit of grit in the dental industry. So that's exactly. good to see. Yeah. So uh, let's jump right in with some questions. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, this is you, you work for a consulting company and, you know, sometimes offices can be a little intimidated by consulting companies or sometimes they even have a, a bad, a bad rap, you know, so I'm, I'm sure that you do everything, you know, I, I can say that I, they're incredibly powerful. I think that they are incredibly, incredibly powerful. Um, but what things should you consider or look for when um, when you're considering, when an office is considering hiring a consulting team uh, for a dental practice? So what are, what are the, what things should stand out? What, what questions should they ask? You know, what should they look for? Okay, great question. Um, well, I think the first thing is what they look for and what they should look for are two different oh. stories. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I find that, um, doing this for a while now i i kind of was on the other side of this and i'll explain that so what they tend to look for is when they have a challenge or a weakness in the practice mm -hmm. they go out and they look for um someone that can improve that that weakness or that challenge and um working for a, a different company at one point before owning my own um you know i was that person where people would seek out me because there was a challenge maybe in the hygiene department mm -hmm. and what i uncovered quickly is you know the challenge isn't the hygiene department <laughs> it's the practice as a whole um it can definitely greatly affect the hygiene department or the hygiene department can be part of that you know challenge or obstacle but typically there are challenges throughout the entire office um you know and, and what's happening so an office will look for someone to fill that void and then i come in um i happen to be well rounded as you went through all the things that i do but typically a front office becomes a consultant or a hygienist becomes a consultant and they they do know the entire practice but their niche is let's just use hygiene is hygiene um, if a hygienist has never sat up front and done billing or had an EOB and a breakdown or an insurance question, um, how effective are they going to be at really improving those systems up front and really walking that walk? So um, the office will be attracted to that and then the person will try to consult the whole practice and not be so great at all the different things that are happening, but do the best they can do. Sure. So, Michael and I, uh, my partner at Next Level, discovered quickly that it, 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 one person can't do it all. Um, just like a team, one person can't have all the skills. So what we've done is he, he having an MBA and being a business leader and a money person and a, um, you know, understanding that whole um, financial aspect of it, me being a hygienist, clinical, dental assistant, and front office, um, we also 
also have other uh, front office specialists that work for us, we're able to cover all of that. Um, because when we're having a, an issue up front, sure, I can go up there and do my best. But if I send my front office specialist in, she's going to be the one that really moves the needle and makes a difference. And same in the hygiene department and so on. Um, so we have we figured um, the best thing to do is be able to cover it all and, um, you know, yeah. the, the whole practice. There's so much going on in that one little building. I don't, I don't, I think we take that for granted. You know, we don't, especially when you don't work or you never worked in one, it's not just a matter of like walking in and punching the clock and leaving. Like the moment you step through the door, you're a part of this well-oiled machine, hopefully well-oiled machine. And so yeah. they, every role plays into each other's role. Right. So, so you're like, so you're saying to look for a well-rounded company, like somebody that can cover all the different, fa you know, faucets of, of that. So right. different departments and things like that. So, right. and you yeah. know, we usually, as most consultants, we come in and evaluate first, and and once we uncover all the different issues that are, are going on or challenges or things that could be improved, knowing right then and there that, you know, if, if it's strictly just a consultant that is focused on hygiene, once all that other stuff is uncovered, hopefully they realize that it, it's going to take more than just um, that to improve the practice they want to improve. Sure. Now my, my partner says it best. He said, I've never, you know, when you're from an outsider or not working in a dental practice, he's like, every 10 minutes counts in a practice. It's like you guys live and breathe in these little increments of time. And so they're all so very important. And we have to maximize the efficiency of each and every 10 minutes that happens in a practice. So I think as an office, you just need to be open to, it's not just one thing in the practice, it's probably multifaceted and that it's going to take more than your hygiene department yeah. to to turn the practice around. And I'm sure when you get in there, you uncover all kinds of things that you didn't even know about in the beginning, right? You start Sometimes we wish we wouldn't have uncovered them. But right? Yeah. You start to <laughs> unturn, turn over some stones and you're like, oh, look what we found. So, <laughs> yep, yep. well, good. So, I've heard, I'm sure you've heard the saying too, you know, there's a reason why they call the dental practice. It's like constantly changing and no one's perfect. And you never open up a practice knowing exactly what to do all the time in every situation. So um, what are, what are the most common mistakes you see that practice owners make? Um, yeah. So I'm going to say something that all consultants say, sorry, everyone. Um, <laughs> One of the biggest mistakes is not having a clear vision, um, not having clear goals and visions. And, you know, if you can imagine, like, I'm going to use a football team as an example, any team, basketball team, anything. If everyone comes with a skill set, right? Um, and we can all, we all think we're doing our very best every day. But if we don't know the goal, the vision, then I'm going to go over in my department and do my thing. And you're going to go in your department and do, you think, do your thing like a football team. If we all, if we didn't have that little huddle and decide what the next play is going to be, you know, you might be an amazing kicker, amazing receiver, whatever. But if you don't know what the quarterback is about to do, then we're going to have a miss. Um, we may win sometimes, but it's not going to be consistent. And my biggest thing is intentionality. I actually wear a, a thing on my arm that says intentional because that's who I want to be in each and every practice in my patients' lives, in my clients' lives, is being intentional with all of that. So I think having a clear vision and a clear goal set by the leader of the practice is super important. Mm -hmm. um, I also think the other biggest thing is, is the systems and organization. Um, you know, I use an analogy. You can use whatever drink you like. I happen to love wine, so we're going to use wine as okay. an analogy. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I <laughs> yes. we'll roll with it. <laughs> right. okay. And so um, if you can imagine, you know, you have this wine all over the table being spilled, right? First of all, that's just, it hurts. Tragic. You know, it hurts. It's tragic. <laughs> 
but we're trying to clean it up. You know, we're trying to clean up the spilled wine, but then you have someone still sitting there pouring it in the glass and it just keeps overflowing, right? So I like to use this, we can use this like with, with recare because that's always a big issue in a practice. If, if I'm the one making the recare calls, trying to get the patients back in the door and my hygienist or my front office is allowing patients to leave without their next appointment, it's just constant mm -hmm. spilling, um, constant cleanup, and we never stop that. Um, and that happens in a lot with the ARs going into 30, 60, 90 days. If we constantly are not having a system behind the reports we run, what we do with those reports, how often are we looking at those things to see where are we, what, what could we have done better today that we didn't do yesterday, then we're going to continue in all parts of the practice to continue to spill that wine. And, um, you know, it's yeah. just a difficult thing to stop. I yeah. don't know, does that analogy make sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you can have all the binders that you want and you can have as much. We do it this way, we do it that way. But you have to sit down and like, okay, step one, step two, step three, all the way to step, this is how we finish it, you know? Right. Um, you're right. It's there's no sense in having a system unless you're you're working on it or yep. constantly refining it. If if something and it's going to change because look at our, how our world has changed. You know, right. so yeah, you got to be able to roll with it. No, yep. so I, I think love the that. Biggest thing is just you know, it, like you just said, analyzing that daily. It's it's what did we do yesterday that worked great? What did we do yesterday that didn't? you know, how do we measure that? How do we change that, improve on that and um, have a, has a, have a system for everything. Everyone have that clear vision of how we're utilizing it and work together to make it happen. So, yeah. So, so you're saying that a lack of that, so a lack of that vision, like that's, that's a big mistake. And we, we preach that too, even as a marketing company, we, we always are telling our clients, what are, what are you bringing to the table? What's your unique value proposition? Like, what is it that is going to set you apart? Let's market that kind of, you know, um, right. and then just not having those systems in place that, that will help you in those 10 minute increments. I love that. You know, 10 minutes of someone sitting around means that the ball is getting dropped somewhere, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. even just 10 minutes. So yeah. as a hygienist, we will do anything for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just 10 more minutes. You know? Right? I can get that. I can get the rest of that calculus. I just need 10 more minutes, right? <laughs> exactly. So. So speaking of being a hygienist, and you have been for many years, which I can't believe, you know, I'm sh again, you started at age five, so you've got a lot under your belt. <laughs> so what are, what are some of the things that you teach in your practices to, for, for practices to get the most out of their hygiene department? I mean, the hygiene department is, is a big deal, you know? Um, and so what are some of those, what are some of the best practices so to get the most out of that department. Okay, that's a, that's great. Um, well, I think it always starts with the patient. So um, I think a lot of, you know, uh, dental team members in general, but especially because you're seeing your hygienist more frequently than anyone else, there are some misses. And what I like to do is find out first what you value most as a patient, because I, w I don't want to talk in my language. I want to talk in yours. You know, I, I want to understand what you want out of, your relationship with me, what you value most about your oral health, so that whenever I bring up a conversation, I'm I'm indirectly getting your permission to have that discussion with you based on what you've told me that's important to you, right? Mm -hmm. So if you tell me that um, you know you, which most people do, you know you don't ever want to be in pain, you know you 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 just don't want to get there, especially if you've experienced that before. Every conversation I have with you, Bridget, is going to be you know, hey, I'm noticing this. And the last thing I want this to do is get out of control. So I want to have a conversation with you about it now so that we can take the most conservative approach in getting you back to health. So I've gotten your permission. I've gotten your um, how, what you value most and how we want to have that discussion. So then everything that comes up during that appointment, I go back to what you told me you want out of this appointment or this really long-term relationship in our practice. Yeah. I love that. You can't just sit them in the chair and then do your stuff and then get up and leave. And that's really hard. You know, that, that it's 
quite frankly, sounds exhausting, you know, to, to do that with every patient. Right. But think of the value that you add. That patient is going to come back and, and see you. And, you're, and, and also, it's like you can't just really just sit down. You have to look at your previous notes, you know, and, and, and say, I do a little research and, and get to know that person. So, right. yeah. Right. That's well, awesome. and you think about it, if you, you know, if you're, uh, we, we teach this all the time too, if you're a very detailed person and I'm not, and I don't get to know you and how you want to have these conversations, you may leave and not schedule and none of us really know why. You may not even know why as a patient, you just know that, you know, there was a disconnect there on the way, you know, I delivered what was happening to you. So that's what I like to teach first um, in the hygiene department is, is really trying to figure, trying to, because I'll have hygienists all the time say, oh, I already know. I, I know how, I know how Bridget likes it. No, no, you don't unless you've asked, right? Um, she may just be so too nice to let you know otherwise, you know, but it's why she hasn't scheduled for that period or that crown for the last five years, you know, so it's, yeah. it's really finding that out. Um, so I like to teach hygienists that. Um, the next thing I really like to teach hygienists is, um, being their part, like you just said, they're so incredibly important to the practice. Um, some will call us the heart of the practice, you know, the, the life of the practice. And that doesn't mean that the other team members aren't as important. But let's face it, people call for cleanings, right? That's yeah. <laughs> why they call the practice. They don't, you know, um, you know, if you're lucky, they call from that crown, you know, you diagnosed a year ago, but, but typically <laughs> you catch them again coming through the hygiene department. So mm -hmm. when they call 99% of the time, unless they're in pain, it's, I want to schedule my cleaning. I want to schedule my checkup. So not only that, we're consistent, you know, we're the ones they see on a consistent basis. You know, they may or may not have dental treatment that year or, or at that appointment, but they are going to need to come back for their next preventative procedure. Um, so um, really and truly, we are um, part of the revenue of the practice. You know, we, we make a big impact of whether the practice kind of goes to that next level or not. Yeah. And so I like to teach them that, you know, they need a vision as well of their department. And I can take a, I can take a two to three hundred dollar appointment. So you're cleaning examine and x-rays, I can take that to a $6,000 appointment. If I listen to you, I see the abfractions you have, the recession you have, and I start talking you, to you about maybe your perio um, is uh, bite related. You know, um, you're, you're, you're not biting together correctly. You're causing damage. Let me take a scan. Let's talk about this a little bit more. All of a sudden, they're interested in Invisalign. Um, or perhaps even a night guard. So I can take a, a two to $300 appointment and make it into an eight up to a $6,000 appointment based on me just spending that time and talking to the patient rather than just cleaning you, you and realizing you have perio. Where is that perio coming from? Yeah. Um, so I think it's really important that we don't get stuck in our one hour box. I've got to, I've got to take x-rays. I got to clean this patient's teeth and I have to write notes and then I have my next appointment and, you know, don't, don't take away from my hour. I have 20 minutes at least with every patient that their mouth is cranked open. I'm staring over them and I can talk about whatever I want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and I prefer to keep it, um, it's my time to educate. It's my time to talk to them about what I'm seeing in their mouth. Sure, I talk about my dog and their dog, um, but that's the friendly chatter at the beginning. I have their undivided attention, and I want to make sure that I'm talking about their over uh, their oral health that impacts their overall health. So yeah. that's what I utilize that for. So understanding that you can directly impact the practice in so many ways as a hygienist. Um, you impact, you have a little puppy back there. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's making an appearance. I he was sleeping a second ago. Your dog, you know. He must have heard you. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, they, they have a, the ability to not only impact, like I said, the oral health care, the overall care, plus the business of the practice. And it's, it's such a big thing. And I, and I love our profession and I, always want to even teach us to be even more professionally driven. Um, yeah. 
because people trust us. You know, we are part of the healthcare team. We may not be their doctor, but we are part of that journey in their life because things manifest in the mouth first. Um, the mouth can affect mm-hmm. things. Um, so yeah, that's my, yeah, I love off. it. <laughs> I love it. And I love how I, I didn't even think about it the way that, uh, you know, you're, you're saying they have their mouth cranked open and you can't do anything. They can't do anything <laughs> about it. So you're like making <laughs> eye contact with them practically. So they either close their eyes or they open them up and listen to you. So <laughs> it's right, right. great. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, good. So another, um, I, I have a bonus question for you. And okay. if you, if you have any tips for hiring hygienists right now, I mean, it's such a, it's so that's one of the things that we're seeing with our clients is that, um, it's really hard to find people. So do you have like a, like a hiring tidbit right now? Like just one little morsel? Yeah. You know, um, it's funny, the, the market value has definitely gone up. So not only is there, you know, possibly quite the shortage in hygienists, the ones that are out there are definitely, um, you know, taking their, uh, their pay to the next level. So um, it is pretty tricky. I think that at the end of the day, um, you know, you want to make sure philosophies align. So I think if you can run some type of ad where you stand out of, of, you know, Mm -hmm. how not, we want to treat our patients great because we all want to treat our patients great, but yeah, maybe some yeah. things that you have in your practice that make you unique. Like I, you know, I have an iTero scanner and I have, um, you know, obviously mm-hmm. dial lasers um, from a particular company, uh, <laughs> you know, these are things that I'm looking for. And as a, as a hygienist, you know, I started using lasers 22 years ago. I wouldn't work in a practice that didn't have a laser now. That's just my philosophy. So yeah. what I want to attract is other hygienists that, you know, have those same skill sets. I also think, you know, a, a sign on bonus isn't a bad idea or special incentives. You know, um, mm-hmm. if you, you know, if they are scanning um, for Invisalign during a procedure, if they are perhaps um, incorporating the laser into that appointment, if they're um, enrolling adults in fluoride, there can be little incentives along the way that help them understand that, yes, that hour, there's a little bit more I want you to do, but I'm going to reward you for that as well. Um, because that I believe that that really helps with patient care. Um, That's yeah, other than that, I don't know. Are, are you, yeah. you know, do you have any suggestions? I know you've been in the dental field for a really long time. And- yeah. No, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head and it's just, it's almost as if you're marketing to potential team members. And so it just struck me as like something that you would do for your patient, you know, Hey, we have Invisalign. This is how it can change, change your life. But, and then with, with trying to attract a new team member, Hey, we have this technology, we want you to use it. And this is how it can enhance your job, you know, and, and, the practice as a whole. So those are really great. So I love yeah, it. And their bottom line, you know, it's a win-win because yeah. I, you know, I, I want them to be rewarded for going above and beyond as well. So yeah. For sure. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, well, this was so amazing. Thank you, Paula. I, we just loved having you. Let's have you again sometime. And, um, you know, Paula from Next Level Consultants, everyone. And Please join us again. We love to do this. We love to have people uh, have guests and, you know, Roadside loves to help educate and, and get the word out and just have wonderful people on, on with us So and partner up. So thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Paula. Right. Have a great thanks. weekend. It was great talking to you. Have a great day. Yeah, you as All well. Right. Take care. Okay, bye. Bye.